Chargers. This weapon seems to get debated all the time, from being hated by solo queue players who are trying to learn the weapon, to being hated by competitive players who think it's broken, to Charger players defending the weapon and stating how it's fair. It seems like there's never a day in this community where there isn't a debate about Charger. But what about we settle this once and for all? We're going to talk about Charger's balance in Splatoon 1 and 2, and we're going to be going over how the weapon is designed, why people hate it, why people love it, and what Nintendo needs to do for Splatoon 3. This is a huge project, and so helping me with this is going to be Ice. Ice has been a top-level sniper player since Splatoon 1 back in 2016, and is currently the best Charger player in the entire Western scene. I could think of no one else better to help me with this video, and so I hope you guys will enjoy watching his gameplay and listening to the clips of what he says about Chargers. With that being said, let's get into this massive project. Chargers and snipers in general of any game are always going to feel oppressive because their idea is basically having a one-shot with an insane amount of range. Especially the higher up in skill you go, the more you're going to feel that amount of pressure and output. It could be limiting in terms of where you can go, and it's why chargers and snipers in general are very rarely a bad weapon. I know at times there's arguments about charger being broken or not, and I feel in terms of balancing, regardless of what the charger weapon is, having any one-shot, one-kill weapon, sniper, charger in any game has the potential to be broken and unbalanced and as well as the best option in the game. So chargers clearly have some extreme strengths and are supposed to be counteracted by weaknesses. For traditional snipers, this means having headshots to be able to one-shot kill and having mobility issues. Splatoon doesn't really have either of those. Headshots aren't really a possibility because your hitbox changes from squid and kid form and that's just part of the game. But for mobility, it's also something that doesn't really fit Splatoon super well. Every weapon has a lot of mobility options because mobility isn't tied to your weapon. Every character has the same form of mobility, and that's just part of being an inkling or octoling. Yes, there's weight classes, but that doesn't really affect swim speed that heavily and can be negated by swim speed up. On top of that, quick super jump doesn't change based on your weapon class either, so your ability to get in and out of fights with swim speed and jumping out isn't really changed very much. So, it looks like Splatoon doesn't have the traditional sniper weaknesses that a lot of other games go for. In terms of headshots, I think that on its own will have, will have to be changed by Nintendo by changing character models or something along those lines, because if it were the case to force chargers to hit headshot players on like Splatoon characters, I think it would just make the game insanely difficult for charger players and when it be balanced. In terms of mobility, I do think that chargers themselves being a one-shot, one-kill weapon are incredibly strong, and the fact that they don't have mobility limiting options, but at the same time, I think that's okay because of the variety of weapons we have in the game and specials, as well as map design. I feel like because this game isn't like other games and that maps can be extremely hilly or flat or have a lot of walls, I think that makes up for any big mobility weakness that Charger players would have. While Chargers don't have traditional sniper weaknesses, Ice is absolutely right that Splatoon has its own unique ways of balancing it. There are certain weapon classes like Blasters and Sloshers that can poke the weapon without being exposed to it. Map design can reduce the amount of oppression that the Chargers can put out, and a lot of specials are made to especially be a counter to Chargers. The weapon also can struggle with painting at times. So that leaves the question, how well do these balance changes actually work? Are these alternate methods effective at balancing Charger, or do they fail in some aspects? And well, Splatoon 1 and 2 both have different approaches to this. So before we can talk about Splatoon 2 today, let's look at Splatoon 1 and Nintendo's first attempts at balancing Chargers.
So let's just say Splatoon 1 had an interesting approach to this problem. The things like specials, certain main weapons, and map design still all applied here, but Splatoon 1 was also more extreme for chargers. E-Leader had more range, and chargers could run damage up to kill in partial charges, which made them a lot more strong. However, chargers really struggled toward the end of Splatoon 1 because of Quick Respawn and Stealth Jump. Quick Respawn activated every single time you died, and Stealth Jump completely hid your marker, though it did slow down your jump slightly. This meant that the Splatoon 1 meta was heavily based around weapons that could run Quick Respawn and Stealth Jump and play aggressively. Charger, especially with its dependence on damage up, was not one of these weapons, and so Chargers became overwhelmed with an incredible amount of aggression. Chargers could still limit things and get a lot of picks, since Splatoon 1 had less team-based specials that could limit Charger's output on a match. But there was just so much oppression, and with the quick respawn, the picks got so little value that it became really hard to use the weapon. Chargers ended up switching to Bento Splatter Scope, which is a more aggressive, less ranged charger that could run quick respawn in order to compensate for it. But in the end, the meta became really difficult for charger players. It just didn't seem as worth it to get the picks that you did get, and the opponents were constantly overwhelming you, which made it a really difficult game to play charger in towards the end of it, despite how prevalent damage up really was for it. I would say Charger in Splatoon 1 is diff definitely different than Splatoon 2. It wasn't, I would say, as broken because things like Bubbler and Kraken and Exuka existed. However, I feel like the QR meta and the QR ability in Splatoon 1 was a good attempt, although it took a while for people to realize how broken it is. But I feel like that was probably the most unhealthy way of the game. You can argue that it makes the game fun and it makes it fast and interesting since everybody's dying all the time and everybody's going in at the same time. But in the same sense, it also limits how good other weapons are. So any other playstyle besides holding forward with QR would basically be irrelevant or would be worse than the QR playstyle. So weapons such as Charger would have a really hard time in that playstyle. And at the end of the meta, the only available charger was Bento Spider Scope with QR. Even though it worked and some teams won tournaments with it, it was still incredibly difficult because you had to hit every single shot possible. And even then, the enemies would respawn in a second and be back in the map within five seconds. So it was really straining on charger and I don't think it allowed it to showcase itself off well at all. Splatoon 1 ultimately made the risk-reward of picking up a Charger just not really worth it via the aggressive meta that happened toward the end. While Chargers definitely have more advantages with damage up and some of the kits that the weapons had, it didn't feel too fun to play towards the end of the game because it just didn't feel rewarding enough for how much effort it took to put in. And so, Splatoon 2 would go on to change the formula in terms of making things more coordination-based, and with that came an entirely different approach to Chargers. Returning to Splatoon 2, Nintendo did away with a lot of the aggressive meta of Splatoon 1, and instead changed their special design to be more coordination based. Specials in this game, while weaker than the first game, were better when coordinated with teammates and were a lot more effective in terms of forcing people out of positions. This meant Charger was effective pretty negatively, because unlike the first game, where a lot of the special design didn't hurt Charger too much in terms of its ability to affect the whole team, a lot of specials in this game did directly affect it. Ink Armor could protect people from getting one shot, Tenda Missiles could force Charger to move, Ink Storm could force Charger to move, Stingray could contest Charger at its range, and Booyah Bomb could also reach it if it's fairly close enough. Charger in this game had a lot of counters to it, both that could protect people from getting sniped, but more importantly, could protect the entire team or displace a Charger for the event of a push-in. This meant Charger had way more to deal with in terms of specials. On top of that, the map design was made a lot less linear in some ways, so some of the stages can be a lot harder for Charger. While there's definitely some maps like Albacore Hotel that are very favored for Charger, there's overall more weaker Charger maps in this game than there was in Splatoon 1. In terms of main weapons though, Charger did get some help since Blasters were really nerfed in the transition from Splatoon 1 to 2, arguably the most nerfed class. And because they're the main thing that deals with Charger due to its ability to poke with a blast radius, this helped Chargers out quite a lot. Sloshers really only had Machine that wasn't seen in the first game, and Slosher was common in both. So overall, there's less main weapons that counter Charger than there was in the first game in terms of prevalency. So there we go, specials counter Charger, and everything is fine now.
Yeah, unfortunately, having the majority of Charger gameplay based around just press the special stick before you move isn't really the greatest solution in the world, and ends up being just as problematic as Splatoon 1's quick respawn. So, let me explain. The first game made Chargers feel pointless by having their kills have decreased value. In this game, they just have it so you can't get kills in some situations at all. Some specials like Tenna Missiles aren't too bad with this, since missiles only force Chargers to move a little bit, and is more about giving away the location and having a small window of opportunity. A lot of other stuff like Inkstorm requires full commitment on the user in order to be effective. However, when you have a special like Ink Armor that provides protection to teammates without any thought whatsoever, and completely negates a Charger shot on all four teammates, there starts to be a little bit too much of a skew against Chargers in terms of how the special is designed. And suddenly, there isn't any counterplay options at all, you're just screwed. Charger against Ink Armor? It depends, because if a team has one ink armor, then Charger versing that one ink armor is pretty balanced, I would say. It's not too difficult to approach, and you can still get plenty of shots in without them constantly having armor up. I think the problem, or like when I start to dislike playing Charger, especially, is when teams run double armor, and specifically spam double armor constantly. And I think it's just not enjoyable to play at that point, because it's just it just turns into a balancing issue where Charger has to constantly be able to kill people without their armors, but at the same time, the other team has to always have two armors to counter the Charger. While even a special like Ink Armor wouldn't ruin Charger in moderation, the problem is because there's such a dependency on Ink Armor in order to deal with Charger that it's leading to a point where people are spamming Ink Armor and trying to run high amounts of it in order to deal with Charger, leading to a playstyle where people are sitting behind walls painting for specials and then peeking out only with ink armor to protect them from charger shots, meaning chargers have almost no interaction they can ever do in the game, because they're either just having to deal with armor, or having to deal with people farming for special behind corners, leading to an incredibly unfun playstyle that doesn't feel good for charger players, or the people playing against them. Specials being a counter to Charger isn't a bad thing, and it's definitely a good route for Splatoon to go, but when a special does so much value against Charger that one of the main game plans against good Chargers is to spam the special and never peek corners whenever you don't have it active, then it's just become way too powerful, and the gameplay has become way too centralized on using a very easy to get value from special in order to deal with it, which just isn't very healthy for the game and especially for those who enjoy using Charger. Specials aren't the only problem to blame here, though. Main weapons have gotten a lot harder at dealing with Chargers on their own. The first game did have QR as an option, and while too strong, it did allow weapons to play against Charger without being super dependent on their specials. Additionally, Blasters, the main class at dealing with Chargers in the first game, were nerfed so heavily that most of them besides Rapid aren't even seen that much anymore, which means there's just a lot less options for main weapons to deal with Charger than there was previously. It basically encourages the cycle of being dependent on specials, because main weapons can't do anything on their own with how weak they've become. This brings me into why Charger is an absolute nightmare to balance in any game, because the power level of snipers is so dependent on every other factor. Is Charger too broken because of a stage? Better have to tweak that stage. Is Charger too weak because special spam has become too good? Well, you better adjust those specials. Has certain main weapons become too good at dealing with Charger, or too weak at being able to poke it? Better fix those main weapons. It's not a matter of fix Charger, it's a matter of fix everything else so that Charger can fit. That's what makes it so hard. If you balance it too much in Charger's favor, then all of a sudden it completely limits the options of the game to too severe of an amount, where people are entirely dependent on special spamming in order to deal with it, or don't have any options at all. But if you make it too one-sided in another favor, then Chargers have no way to exert pressure, and just feel like they're being bombarded with stuff they can't do anything about. You have to get it just right in order for both sides to feel fair. Splatoon 3 is coming up, and not only are Chargers definitely going to be in that game, but there's also going to be Bows, a class that could potentially be very similar to Charger in how they work. So Nintendo really needs to get it right for the third game. So what are the important changes they need to make in order to make snipers feel fun to play, and feel fun to play against? There's two main things that need to be adjusted in order for Charger Balance to be really good for Splatoon 3. The first one is giving more options to players without specials, in order to encourage more interactions for the main weapons themselves. And the good news is, Splatoon 3 already looks like it's heading in this direction, as Ice points out. 
Based on what we saw from the Splatoon 3 trailer, it seems that they're doing something in that case, or at least we can hope so, with the squid jump and the mobility change options. I think that in itself is a buff to basically every weapon, but especially to blasters or other weapons that struggled in this game. And it's also a nerf to opposing charger players because, once again, it just forces the individual player to be much better since they'll not only have to hit their shots, but in some cases they'll have to flick and hit people really fast. And if they're not capable of doing that, then that makes the difference between somebody staying alive or somebody dying. I think the best thing that Nintendo should do is go along with that idea, as well as maybe add mobility options for weapons that might struggle in general with mobility. So I think overall they're going in that direction. I just hope that they do the right thing and balance it out correctly. The developers, at least going into Splatoon 3, can make maps that not only benefit Charger, but heavily reduce this impact that it would have during the game. I think ultimately, outside of team comps, which that's up to teams to figure out how they counter Charger with specials and weapons themselves, I think it's also a part on the developers to make sure that they balance maps correctly so that they don't allow one weapon such as Chargers to be broken everywhere. By allowing main weapons to have better mobility options, buffing weapons that deal with Charger specifically, and designing stages so that, while Charger can be good on them, there's also options at dealing with it, are great ways of making Charger less restrictive and having more counterplay options without the need of specials. However, it's also important that specials aren't overwhelming for Chargers, meaning they have options for Chargers to be able to counteract them rather than being completely limited. I think the biggest uh, not buff necessarily, but the biggest, I think, balance impact for chargers would be to either remove invincibilities and add some other sh sort of sub or special, which I'll talk about in a little bit, But or they can keep abilities, but in the case of something like ink armor, I would rather have them rework it to um, bubbler in the first game, where it has to be nearby, because Splatoon is a team-based game, and I think the concept of ink armor is bad in my opinion, and I think Bubbler and Splatoon 1 they got it right, although it could be overwhelming and broken at points. So if they still want to keep armor, I think that they should tone it back, or not tone it back, but rework it so it's closer to Bubbler and Splatoon 1. Outside of the special points, I know you've mentioned this before, but I think propulsion shots, or if nobody knows that means, something similar to Farah's concussive blasts in Overwatch. Basically anything that doesn't damage the charger, but it makes the charger forcefully move, so that way they can't kill things in one spot for too long. I think it that would make the individual charger player have to be better since they can't sit perched up on like snipe as a callout for example, but they could still apply pressure simply by being on charger and still looking at the enemy. I think this allows the enemy team to be able to push up without the charger setting up freely, and in turn it would allow the charger player to still hit shots since there's no invincibility or a threat of an invincibility coming. But I think it's good balancing because it would make the charger player forcefully move, allowing the enemy team to push up, which I know can be a struggle sometimes in the current game. For both the new Ink Armor Bubbler hybrid that Ice described and the Propulsion Blast special he made, the concepts are the same have counterplay options for Charger to be able to deal with other specials. That way, they don't feel helpless in teamfights when a lot of specials are active. It does certainly make it harder for Charger to hit shots, but not impossible. There's no guarantee Splatoon 3 will get Charger balance right. It's still a nightmare and incredibly hard to do. There's no guarantees. However, now that we've outlined everything that needs to change for both Charger players and those playing against it, it becomes incredibly obvious that both sides are complaining about the same thing, a lack of options. I do believe that with the devs' increased understanding, Splatoon 3 can be the game where Chargers feel fair to play and fair to play against, and hopefully we can finally see that happen. Thank you guys so much for watching, and a big shout out to Ice for helping me with this video and allowing me to use his footage. Being able to work with the best Charger in the Western scene is an absolute pleasure. Check him out in the description, and I hope you guys are looking forward to more content.